Once we open Retrospect, we can begin an immediate backup. On the left side of the screen, we click on Backup. We're then taken to an immediate backup summary window where we can choose our source. We click on Source, and in the Source selection window, we can choose our local C drive, we can choose the My Computer Container, or we can choose the My Computer Container or backup clients that may exist in our network. We can also select the C drive and click Subvolume and pick a specific folder on the disk and define that folder as if it was another volume. Once we select the folder we would like to backup, we can click OK, and then we can go to the destination selection and that will cre bring up a backup set creation wizard. We then click Next, and we get a list of possible backup set types. We can have tape for supported tape drives, disk for any external hard drive, RAID drive, or removable disk device, CD, DVD for supported CD and DVD devices, and file which is also used for backing up onto hard drives. In this example, we're going to select CD and then we're going to click Next. It's going to display the default name of Backup Set A. We're going to use that default name and click Next. We are then given the chance to enter a type of security for this backup set. We can encrypt the backup set with SimpleCrypt, DES, or AES encryption, or just add a simple password. In this example, we're not going to use any type of encryption. If we were to use encryption, then we would need to type in a password and confirm that password. This will encrypt the data on the backup media, securing it for the user. We're going to select No Encryption and click Next. Then it will ask us where would we would like to save the catalog file. The catalog file is an index of all the data that will go on the backup media. In this particular case, we're going to use the default location of My Documents Retrospect Catalog Files and click Next. And then we can click Finish. Now we're taken to the Backup Set Selection window where we can choose the backup set that we've created and click OK. Now we're in the Immediate Backup Summary window our source is the Dell folder, our destination is backup set A, we're selecting all files, and our options have verification on. If we click on backup, Retrospect will first prepare for the open file backup. Retrospect offers open file backup protection for both Windows XP, Windows 2000, and Windows NT operating systems. With Windows XP, Retrospect uses the Shadow Copy APIs that are available for Microsoft. Retrospect will display a Media Request dialog box asking you to insert the proper piece of media. This window is sometimes confusing for users, and it's very important that you read the window carefully. It will tell you exactly what to do. In this case, it says, Please select a new disk. It will be named 1 Backup Set A. In the bottom half of the window, it currently says that the backup drive is empty with no media. If we insert a blank piece of media, then Retrospect will load that media, and then this window will close, and it will begin to copy the data to the disk. After the files have been copied to the media, Retrospect will do a byte-by-byte -byte comparison to make sure the files were copied correctly. If there's a problem during the backup, it'll report an error message. As we can see, Retrospect is now copying the data. During this backup process, it will also update the catalog file so that the catalog file has a listing of the files and folders that were backed up. It will take a snapshot of the backup drive. Basically, it will take a snapshot of the drive that you're copying from. That way you can restore more easily at a later time. The snapshot, think of it as a picture of all the data on the backup 
on the source drive at the time of your actual backup. We can see Retrospect is now in the comparing phase of the backup process. Once it's done copying, it will begin to compare the snapshot that it copied, and then it'll indicate that it's done. If we go to the History tab in the Activity Monitor, we can see a log entry, which will give us information about the backup that we just performed. It'll tell us what folders were copied, that it was compared, and that it was completed successfully. It'll also show performance numbers. We're going to go ahead and close this, and we're going to return to the immediate backup window. Immediate Backup will remember the settings that we used previously. Retrospect has this option here that says Preview. Preview will show us a listing of all the files and folders that are on the backup source. If I control click on the minus symbol here, Retrospect will expand it and show us a list of everything that's there. The diamonds next to the file names indicate that those files have already been backed up and they do not need to be backed up again. The check marks indicate that you have selected them. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And if we look at the summary window, the preview indicates that we have 173 files and our need to copy is zero files. That's because the backup is just completed and Retrospect looks at the name, the size, the creation date and time, the modify date and time of all of the files to identify whether they need to be copied again. We're going to go ahead and try a different source so that you can see what happens when the data has not been backed up. We're going to go ahead and click Subvolume again on the C drive, and we're going to go ahead and select the Windows directory. And we're going to define it as a subvolume, and click OK. Retrospect will scan the Windows directory to identify what files and folders are in that directory that need to be backed up. As we can see, it needs to copy 1.6 gigabytes because this folder has yet to be backed up. If I click on Preview, we can see that it only shows check marks but no diamonds next to the file names, and that is a sign that these items need to be backed up. I can also select items inside this browser window, right click, and choose Properties, and Retrospect will show us information about the file that we are highlighted on. In the upper corner, it also indicates that we have marked around 10,000 files. We'll go ahead and close the browser window, and we can see that Retrospect needs to copy 100% of that folder. We can also click on Sources, and we can highlight multiple items by shift-clicking on them. And I click OK, and it's now going to show us both sources. It shows us that we have the Dell folder, and we have the Windows folder. The amount that needs to be copied is 1.6 gig as opposed to 1.7 because some of this data has already been backed up. Let's go ahead and start the backup again by clicking on Backup. And then Retrospect will prepare for the open file backup and display a media request dialog box because we have removed the backup media. When you do a backup, the very first time you do a backup to backup set A, it's going to copy all of the files from that folder. The second time you do a backup to backup set A, it's going to copy only the newer changed items. The very first time you back up to a backup set, it's going to start with a blank piece of media. If the backup set is called backup set A, then the media is going to get named 1 backup set A. And it will continue to use that piece of media until it fills up. Once it fills up, it'll ask you for a second disk, and it will name it 2 backup set A. As we can see in this window, Retrospect is reporting that it would like us to insert the backup set member named 1 backup set A. If we were to put in a different disk, the media request dialog box would remain here until the user puts in the correct media. In this case, we're going to go ahead and reinsert 1 backup set A, and the window will close and it will begin to copy data. As we can see, Retrospect is reporting that the first folder is going to be copied very quickly, and then it'll begin to copy the second folder. It'll indicate that we're on drive 1 of 2, or disk 1 of 2, or folder 1 of 2 in this case. 
and now it's moved on to folder 2 of 2 so that it can copy that data. We're going to go ahead and stop the operation since we don't need to let it complete for this demonstration. When I click stop, it'll ask me to confirm that I'd like to stop the backup. After the backup completes, we can return to immediate backup and we can click on preview and the preview once again will show us a list of the files and folders that are that need to be backed up. Items with diamonds have already been backed up and the items without diamonds have not been copied yet. If we close the list of files and folders, we can also click on this button that says selecting. The selecting will give us file selection criteria. We can limit our backup based on documents or office documents or music files or movies files we get a wide variety of filters available to us. If we go to options, we see that we have several options available. One of them is normal backup, and the other one is recycle backup. A normal backup copies just the files that are new or changed since the previous backup. The recycle backup erases the entire backup and starts all over again as if you've never done a backup before. So let's make an example. Here Retrospect shows that it needs to copy 1.6 gigabytes. If I go to Options and I change it from Normal to Recycle and click OK, it indicates that 100% of the data needs to be backed up. And we can toggle that back by going to Options, going to Normal, clicking OK, and we can see that some data has already been backed up and some has not. Under Options we also have the ability to turn off verification which will turn off the byte-by-byte -by -byte comparison after the files are copied. We also have an option for data compression. The data compression will give you a compressed backup, saving you backup media. If you have hardware compression on your storage device, this option will actually be ignored. We really only see users taking advantage of this option when using CD or hard disk based backups. If we go to more choices, we have an option there for matching. Matching is what Retrospect uses to identify whether files are new or changed since the previous backup. If we leave matching in the default, we'll see that 1.6 gigs need to be copied. If I go to Options and More Choices, and I turn off matching and click OK, Retrospect will report that 100% of the data needs to be backed up. What it will do is it will add that data to the end of your backup media. It will not erase the backup media in the process. While a recycle backup erases the backup media and starts all over again, disabling matching will add the same data to the end of the backup. The default options have the two top box selected. If we select the bottom box, Retrospect will consider the path. If I have an identical file on two hard drives, Retrospect typically will only back up one version of that file. The snapshot will track the occurrence of that file in both locations so that it can be restored from either drive A or drive B. If I turn on the bottom matching options, it will consider the path and it will back up the file in its both locations. The second time it backs up those files though, or attempts to back up those files, it won't need to copy them because they've already been added to the backup media and you are continuing to use matching because the top two boxes remain checked.